Welcome back to another shift here at the Intensive Car Unit. Today, we're going to be looking into the Ferrari Maserati F1 transmission hydraulic actuated um, shift assembly. Uh, this is the same sim assembly that's also used on Lamborghini, um, Aston Martin, and all their single clutch cars. Um, and it's the whole assembly is made by Magneti Morelli. So we're going to get into it. We're going to take it apart. We're going to look at it, see how it works, and um, see if we can't use some of those components or even the basic design of that on our manual transmission conversion because that's ultimately what we're here for we don't want flappy paddles we want to actually row each and every gear so what do you say we go ahead and get to work now that we've gotten the actual f1 gear selector actuator off of the vehicle i'm actually going to give you a rundown on what it, how it works so on this side right here is the hydraulic unit um, there are hydraulic lines that go in from the top side this is upside down but uh, from the top side and that will drive a piston there are two pistons there's one up here and there's one down here in and out that changes the relation of this piece here and this piece here can't do it right now by way of hydraulic force um, and that is how uh, up and down in and out will select the gear uh, from your various rows of your um, transmission shaft so um, and then on this side I've got the actual um, servos that are not servos uh, the actual um, readout from what gear or where this is located at in relation to everything else. There are two little um, uh, hall sensors or whatever. I don't know what the actual name is for them, but they sense on this piece right here of where this shaft is, which is what actually selects your gear <clears throat> in relation to everything else. And this, these two little components right here that aren't present, will actually then send signal to the transmission control unit. And by that, it will um, explain out what needs to happen or if there's an error, if this isn't in range, what it needs to be. So that's how this system works um, as a quick rundown. And let's get this guy taken apart so we can actually see what we have to work with to see if we can convert this to a manual setup. Okay, let's go with a little bit more in-depth setup on how this whole system works. Um, so this is the actual hydraulic actuator right here. Hydraulic lines are here like I talked about. And the way the system works are there are two rods, as mentioned, that go in and out over here. 
Now, when those rods go out, they affect how this rod, which is your actually what goes to the transmission selector. Okay, so as this turns up and down, what happens on the transmission side is, is that moves in location inside the transmission where the gear selector is up and down in the assembly. All right, now that is handled, the up and down motion is handled by this rod. And let me show you how that works. There's a steel rod in here, and as that pushes in and out, I'm pushing backwards so you can see, you'll notice that this has now moved down. So as I push it up, it goes up. As I push it down, it goes down. Now, what happens is, um, for this system to work, is now you're like, well, okay, good, that selects up and down in the transmission, but it doesn't actually select the gear on that rail. Now that is handled by this slot right here. And what happens is when this rod here goes in and out, it is attached to the actual transmission selector to go into the gear neutral into the um, second gear of that rod. So I hope this helps explain some of that. We're going to take this out further apart and um, start looking into it and seeing if I can actually use this to convert this assembly into a manually controlled selector assembly instead of having to try and find one from Ferrari and Maserati that are honestly insanely expensive and very hard to find. So here we go. Okay, now that we got the hydraulic actuator assembly apart, we're gonna actually start taking a look into how the system functions. So this little guy is that little cam that I showed you earlier. Let's see if we can throw some more stuff that's irreplaceable on the floor. What do you say? Um, sorry about that. So this little guy, this is the cam, and that cam is what actuates the um this piece stays stable and this piece is what actually rotates and that's what adjusts the selection so the way this whole assembly works is this rides sort of like this this guy screws in here and as this rod is pushed um, in and out so again this is going to be in one place as this guy goes in it changes that selector that cam rotates and again this is what selects up and down to choose your various gear sets gear set meaning um, uh, first and second gear third and fourth gear fifth and sixth gear and reverse. This is how it's done right here. That chooses those. Now, then this guy, as it moves up and down, this 
assembly is actually what cams out right here as it moves in and out will cam out and the rotation here that is entered from that will then select your actual gear of first gear. It actually engages the gear. So this whole assembly kind of sits together like so, and that is how it rotates. And this is pretty much how the entire assembly works. It's pretty basic, pretty straightforward, but um, it's pretty cool because with this information and this guy right here, I think I can make something with either cutting this in half or even fabricating something entirely spe uh, specific for this because I don't need the hydraulics in here. I just need a cap that can hold these guys in place that I can then drive these rods. And by driving these rods, I can then shift my gears manually. Now that we were able to actually take apart the inner workings of the F1 um, hydraulic actuator assembly, we were able to see on how this assembly works as well as if the main design of that will be usable. Um, ultimately, I think I'm gonna go a different route entirely just for the purpose of that way I can get a hold of parts and, and stuff at a reasonable cost and actually control the, the flow of how everything works. So I know this wasn't as um, exciting for some of you. I know it was a little bit more dull, a little bit more technical, probably too technical, but um, we're getting ready to start getting the, the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of what's actually gonna happen with this system and this overall project. Um, the next episode, we're gonna get into some really down and dirty, uh, I'll be throwing some sparks, throwing some welds and, um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let's look forward to the fire and flame on the next episode. And uh, as always, stay safe.